welcome everybody to another episode of our Duotone Foiling Tech Talks. I'm Klaas, I'm standing here with Jerome Bonnier, our foil designer. And Jerome, before we pick up the foil, um, we came from, back from Langebaan yesterday. Uh, some intense days of uh, wing racing. Yep. How many races have you done? Uh, I think we did 13, yeah, 13 or 14 races. Yeah. Okay, so good effort. And uh, how many of those have you won? I uh, believe uh, all of them except two, so... Good yeah. job. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's the foil you've been using. Yeah. Um, this is the foil that we will introduce just in a little moment from now. The new Blitz. And uh, it's actually not really aimed to be on full-on racing foil, more like a free race foil. Yeah, exactly, yeah. But it obviously shows that you have some knowledge about being fast, not yeah. only from kite foiling, but also in terms of uh, foil design. So great job on that. Um, maybe run us through the blitz a little bit and what, uh, what you've been doing design-wise to make it controlled and easy, because yeah. that's, that was the goal actually, to go fast, easy, um, have a good time being fast, overtaking your buddies. Exactly. And um, so, yeah, we have two sizes here, so give us a little bit of infos. Yes, yeah, so as you just said, the blitz is all about control. Uh, we all know uh, if you've got a super slippery foil, which is hard to, to ride, you're not actually going much faster than the other guy. So the most obvious thing we have now is the new 47 uh, fuselage. Uh, as you know, longer fuselage means more pitch stability, yaw stability, and it also helps a little bit in the roll stability. When you say 47, that equals a 70 fuselage in yeah, total length? Yeah, it's about the length, if you look at the, from the top to the end, it's about a 70 cm fuselage. So it's something we didn't have yet in the, in the range. Then of course, there is kind of this, this front view of the foil, where we've got that dihedral going into a flat there, which really sort of locks the roll and prevents the, the foil from being a little bit too loose under your foot. Uh, and then we've got this new 190R stabilizer with the nine, uh, nice winglets, again, helping control that, uh, that your stability. So everything has been, of course, thought out to work together. So, you know, profile of the, the stabilizer matches the, the profile from the front wing and everything has been thought out as a complete setup. Um, so that's kind of what we would recommend uh, guys that are buying this front wing, we would recommend them to also get the tail and the stabilizer to have the package the way we thought out, uh, thought it out to be. Although, of course, if you do have a shorter tail or a P-stabilizer, you can ride this front wing. Still going to work. Still going to be faster than the carve. Still faster than the carve, but you know you might not have that really good uh, stability which the longer fuse uh, will give you. Yeah. Um, and I guess. The other thing we've got to talk about is the addition of the, this fourth bolt here. Uh, probably a lot of people who bought the 2.0 uh, mast would have realized that we've added this uh, fourth insert. It's something we didn't really talk about until now because uh, obviously we didn't have the product to match it. But uh, you know, we've had a few questions about this, this insert on the, on the website and etc. Well, the reason why we've added this fourth insert is basically to help uh, control that, that longer fuse, right? Longer fuse means more leverage coming from the stabilizer. And we noticed while we were doing some testing that we were getting some very small deflection from the back of the fuselage here. And we realized we needed to clamp that down, secure it properly onto the mast to make sure that nothing was moving. And uh, so that's why we now have like this, this fourth uh, M6 bolt in addition to the three M8s. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah, the interesting thing I found when we tested that we found it was actually the more stable with the shorter fuse piece in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, and then we made this longer tail end, which normally should add the control. And we realized, hey, it's actually at a certain speed, you start to have like control issues moving down. Yeah. Uh, the foil wanted to drive down. Um, so actually with the um, 37 tail, it works very nicely. With yeah. the 43 tail also, just when you go longer, when you go that's longer, when we you started start, to have yeah. that leverage. Exactly. Where the 
back wing creates so much power that it's actually pushing the tail down. Exactly. And then changing the angle of attack of the back wing yep. and then driving down. Yeah, you basically at some point you've got your stabilizer starting to sort of change an angle of attack, which is something you don't really want at high speed. So yeah, this was like a big uh, sort of breakthrough, <laughs> if we could say. Initially, we right. wanted to release this wing way earlier. Yeah. And this was like uh, in, the f in the final stages of the process. Yeah. Um, we found that um, added all these inserts to the masts. Yeah. And then uh, added this to the, to the foil and the exactly. control difference is insane. Yeah, yeah, and no, I mean, it makes the whole difference. Um, and now we are, yeah, we're super happy and uh, we've got two sizes. Uh, so a 550 and uh, 800, which is built around the same philosophy and uh, works with the same stabilizer. Uh, and uh, of course, we still have the possibility to play around with the, the shims that we have and we encourage people to do it because everyone has a slightly different riding uh, type or some, you know, some waters are maybe a little bit liftier than others and some, sometimes you might want a little bit more angle of attack, a little bit more pitch control or a little bit less. So yeah, we encourage people to play around with the shims. Uh, let's say the... the you, did you personally use shims in the race? I did use some uh, negative shims. Uh, I went all the way to minus 0 0.6. Um, and uh, that's kind of my preferred setting, uh, unless I'm in really cold water or fresh water, I might uh, remove the shins at yeah. this point. Um, but let's say in like in Mauritius and here also in Langenborn, I've got to say the water was kind of kind of lifty-ish, so I reduced the angle of attack a little I bit. I feel that all the time when we test on Maui, we have way more lift in the water and you in Mauritius than I would have in my local waters, Baltic yeah. Sea or lakes, yeah. where uh, you're missing that front foot. And, uh, that exactly. makes quite a difference, yeah. You just should definitely yeah. play around with that, it's guys. It's nice having this, the possibility to do it and, uh, yeah, change it, play around with the mass position. That's something we should probably also talk about. Uh, these foils are set up to work with the mast relatively far back in the tracks, like towards the last, let's say, third of your, your tracks. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you've got your mast sort of in the middle or in front of the middle, you're going to be getting way too much front foot. So that's something else to keep in mind. Have it towards the back end of your tracks if you have a, a duotone uh, board, of course. Yeah. Uh, so you would definitely recommend to pair it with the 94, new 94 uh, D-Lab 2.0 mast? Yeah, that's kind of the best match for it. Of yeah. course, you can use it on the 84 or the 76. Don't really know why you would use a 76, but yeah. The 94 is what is kind of thought out to to be the best option for this for this uh, front wings but you have just an sls setup um any carbon mast from fanatic before or now the the latest duotone range um they all fit on that so they will fit on your sls sls mask but uh you will not be able to use the 47 tail which has that uh that fourth uh, 3bs plus yeah connection yeah. yeah so if you do have a uh, standard sls mast then you'll have to stick with the 37 or the 43 tail mm -hmm. without that one and then that will work uh, if you've got the new mast then obviously you get the opportunity to use the the fourth bolt which is kind of the ideal way to to ride this for it yeah now you mentioned we have two sizes a 550 and an 800 yeah. um, who would you recommend which size and what's actually the the target rider yeah, so obviously the 800 is the easiest one to ride. So if you don't have a super high level mm -hmm. uh, or if you're just a heavy rider, like more than 85, 90 kgs, um, you will want to use that 800. I'm 70, 72 kilos. I still use that 800 uh, whenever there's kind of less than 15, 18 knots. Um, and I'll pick that 800 if I'm doing some upwind riding, because obviously this is gonna bring me upwind much faster than the, the 550. And it's still a fast wing, like I still clocked uh, over 30 knots on the, on the 800. So it, it goes fast. Since uh, we're talking numbers, what's your top speed of the 550? Yeah, the 550 just shy of 33 so far, uh, winging. Yeah. And uh, kite foiling, uh, 38 knots. Wow. Yeah, that's quick. So yeah, you, uh, we didn't mention that, but of course these foils work really well for kite foiling as well. 
uh, for the same reason that they work for winging, they work for kite foiling. They're super fast. Uh, obviously, kite foiling, even sort of heavier riders can use the 550 a little bit easier because they've got the kite to lift them. Mm -hmm. um, setting wise, pretty much the same setting. You might have a slightly different uh, tuning on your kite foil. But again, it's just you just have to sort of experience a little bit, uh, try some some stuff, and see what you like best. Okay, and the 550 is probably the perfect defi wind weapon, I guess. Exactly. So 550 is for any light rider. Uh, I'd say as soon as the wind goes over 18 or so knots, uh, that's the weapon. Defi wing, uh, exactly. That's what you want. And um, yeah, so kite foil. Winging at high speed, even just, I mean, free riding, why not? If you, if you like to free ride fast, you're not into, especially into racing, but just like something that goes fast yeah. and is easy. It's the perfect, uh, yeah. That's exactly wanted, what I wanted to mention. Uh, you mentioned that in the beginning, but the, the goal was to make something that is easy to reach exactly. higher speeds and yeah. keep high average speeds. Yeah. So for the DeFi, for example, when you run 20 kilometer race, yeah. It's quite exhausting to be on a very technical foil and to keep that high speed average yeah. and to not make mistakes. And I felt with this one, it's like uh, you get on it and it's very easy to keep the pitch, um, keep the keep the foil in the same same height in the water and just push and push yeah. through and keep that average, which is uh, yeah very nice and and a nice separation to the to the other foils we have in the range. Completely. And yeah. we get a lot of requests, which is the fastest foil. We had to always had to say it's the carve now. It's clearly the blitz. It's clearly the blitz, yeah, for sure. Um, All right, well done. Uh, great designs. I think we got some great feedback also from some other racers in the in the race who, who tried the blitz. Uh, they can't wait to get their hands on them. Yeah. So guys, if you have any, any more questions, post them below the video and uh, Jerome is going to be there to answer all the, the tech details that you want to know. And uh, if you like this sort of content, give us a like and follow. And I hope to see you in one of the next episodes.